News at sunrise. It's 4.59. Here are your morning headlines. Police made an arrest connected to a case of road rage from back in September. Two drivers got into an argument. One of them pulled a gun and shot at the other, but nobody was hurt. Police arrested Hai Vo and seized a gun they believe he used in the shooting. Amtrak is no longer letting passengers sue if they get hurt on board in a crash. Amtrak lost a big lawsuit and had to pay four and a half million dollars to a woman injured in this deadly derailment near Olympia back in 2017. Now when passengers buy a ticket, they sign away their right to sue. Instead, they have to start arbitration directly with Amtrak. And tonight, the Blazers will take on the Rockets in Houston. Right now, they are in the midst of a six-game road trip, and they grabbed a much-needed win against the Spurs on Saturday. Reports say the newest Blazer, Carmelo Anthony, won't join the team until tomorrow when they take on the New Orleans Pelicans. Those are your Monday headlines. Now, here's what's coming up on Sunrise. Well, Brenda Braxton, we have a bear on the show this morning <laughs> by the name of Bebe. Bebe, the panda bear, leaving the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. this week and heading to China. We'll explain why Bebe is saying bye-bye to D.C. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming up in 15 minutes. Then later this hour, the pressure of parallel parking. Uh-oh. That can drive people crazy, of course. Some spots are super tight. Cars start lining up behind you, waiting to get the job done. Waiting for you to get the job done, that is. Can you get the job done? In a new edition of Driving Me Crazy, Chris McGinnis explores just how tough it can be sometimes to grab a spot along city streets. Are you a good parallel parker? Well, you know how good I am at driving. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> actually, actually, I was going to say I'm a much better parker than I am a driver. Okay, good. <laughs> so whether you're just driving into work or trying to parallel park today, let's see what the forecast holds. Is it going to be wet out there, Rod? A little bit of mist potentially uh, with some fog this morning, but really the, the main story this morning is it's foggy and it's mild. Real quick, I want to remind you uh, the ban of clouds here coming to town during the day today, and we will be seeing increasing rain this afternoon, but right now it's mainly dry, just foggy outside 52. Yeah, 52 degrees, really warm outside. So to the bus stop 56 at noon. Lunchtime is about the time we start the chance of getting some showers and then eventually rain gets going and picks up and picks up. Should be fairly wet out there mid afternoon when the kids get out of school. 55 degrees, probably too dangerous today to, to parallel park. <laughs> All right, more on the weather coming up shortly. <laughs> Rob, thank you. Three Middle Eastern restaurants in our area are dealing with possible hate crimes. They received anti-Semitic and homophobic phone calls over the weekend, and now police are trying to figure out who's behind these threatening messages. Christine Pitawanich is following the story for us this morning in our newsroom. Christine, one of the restaurants involved, a pretty popular spot known as Shalom, y'all. Good morning, Drew, Brenda. Yeah, that restaurant is in southeast Portland. It serves up Israeli food, and its voicemail was hacked twice this weekend, once on Saturday night, then again last night. And, you know, we want to warn you that language is graphic, so take a listen to both those messages. Hi, you have reached the stupid Jewish restaurant. You have reached the Jewish restaurant. If you want to eat our food, just come here and yourself. One of the recordings also contains pretty explicit language about employees performing sex acts on each other and customers. Managing partner Jamal Hassan says he changed their password and access codes after the first time their voicemail was hacked, but that didn't stop the hacker. In fact, Shalom Yal's phone number was also used to make threatening calls to two other Middle Eastern restaurants in the area. The tactic called spoofing and is commonly used in scams. Hassan says the whole situation feels really violating. Unfortunately, you know, because of the region of the world of the food that we serve, uh, oftentimes um, we do get, you know, lumped in with politics or religious differences uh, when really, you know, we're celebrating the cuisine from all of the Mediterranean and the Middle East. Officers tell us they think the first threatening phone call Shalom Y'all got could have been from another restaurant that thought Shalom Y'all had threatened them. And by the way, I'm worth mentioning one of the owners of Shalom Y'all also owns restaurants that serve up all different types of food, Brenda. Thank you, Christine. A phone scam is tricking people into thinking there's a warrant out for their arrest and they have to pay up. Here's the twist, though. The caller is posing as a Portland police officer, and old news clips help crack this case. Here's Brittany Falkers. 
Imagine getting a call saying there's a warrant out for your arrest, and if you don't pay bail immediately, you'll be arrested. Sounds like a scam, right? Well, this latest con is a bit trickier. The incoming call comes from an official police number, and the caller is using the name of a real officer. This officer, in fact, Sergeant Peter Simpson with the Portland Police Bureau. Pretty jarring to hear somebody using, uh, you know, my identity to scam someone. The scam recently hit two real estate agents in Oregon, one in Bend, the other in Eugene. Both times, the caller claimed to be Sergeant Simpson, and the number the call came in on was the Portland Police non-emergency line. And really what they're doing is they're using the internet to spoof a phone number, so you think it's one person, but it's really someone else. You might recognize Simpson from past news coverage because he was the spokesperson for Portland Police for seven years. The incidents have been really all over the place. And it's old interviews online that actually helped one of the victims sniff out the scam, which got the voicemail demanding bail. Her daughter turned to the internet and searched for Sergeant Peter Simpson. When she did that, she realized the person in the videos didn't sound like the person on the phone. If her name is Sergeant Peter Simpson from the Portland Police Bureau. That was good, good sleuthing on their part. Neither victim fell for the scam, and the conversation never got to the point where the scammer asked for a specific dollar amount. But police say scams like these have cost people thousands in the past. It just, you hear about them, it's just heartbreaking because they're getting people for thousands of dollars. Uh, in some cases, people don't have that money to give. There are a few things to keep in mind to avoid becoming a victim. Portland police want you to know that they do not call people to demand or request money ever. Never give out personal or financial information to an unsolicited caller or email. Always be suspicious of callers who demand immediate payments. And stay private. Update social media privacy settings and online accounts. For more tips to avoid scams and resources, if you are a victim of any scam, head to KGW.com. Brittany Folgers, KGW News. We're also following a terrible story that took place yesterday in California. A shooting at a family gathering in Fresno left four people dead and six others hurt. So this happened last evening in the backyard of a home where people had gotten together to watch a football game. Police say somebody snuck into that backyard and opened fire before they ran off. Police have been searching the neighborhood all night, but they haven't found the shooter. Now to the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. We're starting week two of public hearings. Eight witnesses are expected to testify this week, including one with a connection to Portland. First up, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman. He was on that July 25th phone call between President Trump and Ukraine's president. He was so alarmed about what he heard, he reported his concerns to the National Security Council's top attorney. He also says part of the call memo is missing, specifically the part where the Bidens are discussed. The president's supporters still claim there was no quid pro quo on that call, exchanging military aid for investigating the Bidens. There were only two people that participated in that phone call. It was Donald Trump and President Zelensky. Both of them were very happy with the phone call. Zelensky said there was no pressure. On Wednesday, EU Ambassador Gordon Sondland is set to publicly testify. He owns several hotels right here in Portland. There are many, many questions about what he knows about the president's alleged effort to get Ukraine to investigate the Bidens. The Today Show will have much more on the impeachment hearings coming up at 7 o'clock right after sunrise. And then we will broadcast tomorrow's hearing live starting at 6 a.m. We have an update for you this morning on the New Seasons beef recall. New Seasons has expanded that recall to include both fresh and frozen meat. Four people in Oregon have gotten sick after eating ground beef contaminated with E. coli. The recall now includes steaks, roast, ready to cook mixes, frozen beef bones and house made beef products. New Seasons is offering full recon, uh, refunds. That is for more specifics on the recalled products. You can visit KGW.com. And happening later today, the long talked about plan to replace the I-5 bridge between Oregon and Washington takes a small step forward. Oregon Governor Kate Brown and Washington Governor Jay Inslee are meeting today in Vancouver to try to hammer out some details on this. The I-5 bridge is more than 100 years old and anyone who uses it knows it is a big source of congestion. Both governors have also said it's a seismic risk and needs a lot of safety upgrades. The plan to replace the bridge has been talked about for a long time, but in 2013, talks stopped over funding issues. 
Mm. Rod's been talking about that bridge. Yeah. Remember, Remember the guy in the jet engine power pack? Yes. That flew? Yeah. He talked about flying over flying in over Columbia. The river? I mean, you hate that thing. Well, the, the snafus. Remember the last time was <laughs> apparently nobody picked up the phone and called the Coast Guard and said, how high does the bridge need to be? Let's make sure we call the Coast Guard this time. Hi, Rod. <laughs> what a mess I'm that's sorry. been, right? I know. I got time. you on a tangent. That's a, oh. tangent. You but do I not digress. Want to put him on. All no, right.